Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with rank 12 of the F1 Manager 24 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Of course, if you missed out on the video that went live a couple of days ago from Austria, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Of course, we had quite an interesting sprint weekend from the Spielberg circuit. Sadly, uh, no more points were scored by the team, but for the first First time in quite a while, Liam Lawson seemed to actually have a little bit of confidence. Still no luck uh, inside this game, but a little bit more confidence for our second driver there. We're still trying to slowly develop the pair of them uh, to continue trying to up their perks inside this game as well. So yeah, we're doing we're doing okay so far and of course obviously trying to do everything we can of course. You know, a lot of our focus is on, you know, what's going to be going on next year. So obviously we've got a little bit of money in the bank, but I do want to keep trying to bring upgrades to this year's car as well. And now, I believe, yeah, for the first time in quite a while, we can actually do so. Looking at the car, Yuki seems absolutely fine. I don't believe as well, yeah, Liam is under too much risk either of component damage. So, yeah, we're finally, finally going to be able to design a new part on this car. So, we've done a front wing, we've done a chassis... Uh, the last ones we haven't done an upgrade on yet are rear wing and side pods. So I think we're going to try and do a nice big side pod upgrade then onto the car here. We're going to try and take up all of our MAU uh, C uh, CFD hours. We're going to use up all of our wind tunnel time as well. This is going to be a massive upgrade onto the car because ultimately... We don't seem to be able to use all of the time, uh, you know, all of the resources every single go. Uh, obviously, just because we don't have enough cash. So, yeah, we're going to try and make sure that we see big gains across the board there. And you can see yeah, a bit of G-force increase. Uh, a little bit of a reduction on the engine cooling, which would be a little bit of a shame. Um, but apparently, why, why on earth if we leave that at standard, will we only see... A tiny bit of engine corner. I guess we'll go like that so at least we see gains across the board. Uh, yeah, you can see obviously it does compromise everything else though just slightly there. So we're going to put, I think, six engineers, five engineers onto that. Uh, and that's going to be ready in 24 days. Or I could rush it and get it in time for the next Grand Prix at Hungary. I think we No, there's no real point in doing that. That'll be an upgrade ready for after the summer break. Have a good little development there as well. It leaves us still with a bit of money, uh, obviously, to manufacture some new parts if we need to as well. Finances-wise, in terms of the cost cap, we've still got 50 million remaining. Um, but the projection by the end of the season is minus 76 and a half million. So that's not particularly good. We've spent 89 million uh, of the cost cap so far. And most of that seems to be on facilities and car part development. So... Yeah, we're probably going to have to start looking at next year soon uh, and obviously kind of just accept that most of this campaign is going to be a little bit of a throwaway. Taking a look uh, quickly before I get at the F2 and the F3, uh, it still looks like, yeah, Oli Behrman continuing to open up his lead at the top of Formula 2, although Isaac Hajar did make big gains last weekend in Austria as well. And in Formula 3, you can see Kasper Suka uh, lost a fair amount of points to Oli Gertha. So the F3 championship... Uh, he's looking very, very tight between two MP Motorsport drivers uh, and two Prima drivers there. All three Primas inside the top six so far in Formula 3. So they're having a pretty good run of form uh, in that series as well. But yeah, let's head though here to the Silverstone circuit. Obviously the birthplace of Formula 1. Let's hope we can have a good weekend today. Welcome and come on in to the home of British motor racing. We're here in legendary Silverstone, where the very first Formula One World Championship Grand Prix was held back in 1950. It's a place where every tuft of grass breathes motorsport, and the crowd are already crackling with excitement. Well, here we are then looking out towards Silverstone, and rather interestingly, it's actually looking like it's going to be a dry Grand Prix. A bit like we saw last weekend, then free practice is going to rain, uh, but the rest of the weekend is meant to be pretty sunny skies. So hopefully that isn't going to affect running too much as well. 
early on in the session there. Of course, Silverstone is a very, very high-speed circuit, but you do need a fair amount of downforce as well around this track. So it is all about compromise, and yeah, it is all about having confidence in the car as well. So as always, we'll try out some slightly different configs in terms of the setup with both drivers. In fact, we'll try and go with a really, really low rear wing. I have quite a high front wing there on Liam Lawson's car, but of course, yeah, usually, you know, early on in the session... It is just about trying to gather up some data, of course. This is actually weirdly one of the fastest tracks on the calendar, um, which, yeah, works out quite nicely as well because it means you can get a lot of mileage in and then obviously both drivers as well pretty much now fully confident uh, with the car they've got underneath them. They just, yeah, got a tiny bit more to go. And then, of course, obviously we're going to have a new car anyway or some new upgrades on the car ready for the next race end there. Looks like we've got a few juniors as well. Pietro Fittipaldi in the Haas. Uh, Jack Crawford, Chloe Chambers, Colapinto, Kuzmini, uh, Fred Vesti, Gertha, and Isaac Hajar in the Red Bull as well there. So, yeah, I like to do, you know, I like to keep up with what's going on around the F1 world as well. Uh, I think we do need to actually go ahead now. We've got a little bit of cash uh, and try and sign a junior driver, but actually do it correctly this time uh, and not try and offer them like the number one driver role within the team for three years uh, and instead, you know, offer them an affiliate contract within the team as well there. As you can see, Sites, uh, I think Lewis Hamilton's car and Lance Stroll are still carrying mechanical faults into this weekend as well. So that might open up opportunity for us uh, later on as the weekend unfolds. Uh, but yeah, now the team just starting to get worried that rain is meant to start falling pretty soon. Uh, it's literally meant to rain for about two minutes later on in the session. Why on earth did it tell me it was going to be like a wet session here on Friday then? So a little bit odd uh, as the rain has now started, but it shouldn't become anywhere near an issue. Is Lawson happy with the car? So we'll bring him straight back into the pit lane then. Just have to wait for Yuki to make sure um, that he is confident as well on the other side of the garage there. But yeah, Lawson uh, is not... Oh no, sorry, wrong car, isn't it? I was too busy looking at Yuki there. Uh, so Lawson's going to peel into the pit lane. Uh, and I've just seen as well... I think we can cheese the track here at Silverstone. I think the game will allow you to pit and it'll actually save you time... Uh, at the end of a lap there. Because you can just see Lawson's immediately jumped back past Yuki. And Yuki is, on the other hand, not happy with the car he's got underneath him. So we'll bring him back into the pits as well. But take a look then. Yuki is currently 2.7 seconds off the pace. And as he makes his way into the pit lane, he finds 6 tenths of a second. Could we use that as we go into qualifying? I don't know. I'll we'll have to wait and see when we get a bit closer there. But yeah, Yuki... Not happy with the car concept there, to the surprise of probably nobody. Uh, he's actually got too much straight line speed, rather interestingly, so not too sure how we manage that one. Uh, but we'll bring the traction control in a bit. Uh, sorry, not. Well, sorry, we'll bring the anti roll bars in a bit, so we'll have less traction on the car, because that's what he seems quite happy with. Um, but this is a. I'm genuinely going to test that out when we move into qualifying. I genuinely want to see whether diving into the pits at the end of a lap. I can see you improve. Even if it's just by a couple of tenths. That could have been critical for Lawson uh, last time out back at Austria there. Obviously, he got knocked out in Q1 by like less than a tenth of a second and ended up like P20. Admittedly, Austria is the shortest lap time um, on the calendar. So, you know, that probably means, you know, the, the margins are going to be tighter. It didn't stop Max Verstappen absolutely dominating the race weekend as it went on. I mean, look at Alex Albon as well, that up in P9 early on in free practice. He is on medium tyres, but I tell you what, Williams, this could be a very, very good track for them, of course. You know, kind of them, V-Carb, Haas on their day. They're all kind of our rivals still right now at this stage of the campaign. Alpine uh, and Kicksauber seem to struggle just a little bit more still. Uh, inside this series as well there is I think yeah we're gonna have to box for a new set of tires because both sets of tires are looking pretty wrecked on both cars right now Yuki's got a little bit more left on his but I don't want Liam to end up with a puncture here that might potentially damage the car as well setup looks pretty good just make a couple of final tweaks then and send him on his way on a set of mediums um so yeah I think I think we are getting there this weekend both drivers looking... Well, obviously, we'll get confirmation on a second on Yuki. Uh, but yeah, both drivers looking pretty good. 
Yuki doesn't say anything inside this game that he isn't just yelling at the top of his lungs. And weirdly, I do quite like it, uh, but it does get a little bit frustrating as well from time to time. Uh, Sonoda yeah, getting towards the end of his second stint. He's got less than 10 minutes on the clock, so we need to try and get this all dialed in. As There we go. Yeah, that time around, he's a bit happier uh, with the car as well then. So I think that's been a fairly successful free practice session. We'll just have a quick look there, and you can see yeah, he's pretty happy. Uh, so I'll make some final tweaks, and I think I will see you guys out in qualifying. Will practice pay off for the drivers? Well, we're about to find out in qualifying. Remember, we lose the slowest five drivers at the end of Q1, another five at the end of Q2, and Q3 will set the top ten positions. There's been a bit of talk about Alex Albon, Karu. How are things looking for him today? Looking at the lap times, we saw a real lack of pace from them in practice. They never look quite comfortable with the setup, and they'll need to try something new for qualifying if they want to get past Q1. Let the competition commence. No idea then what Alex Albon and Williams tried in Q uh, sorry in FP2 and FP3. You can see he was where was he? He ended up P12, so he's done all right throughout free practice. Uh, FP3 result was a little bit worse. They're down in P14. But I would argue that, yeah, he's certainly on the money right now. I'd also argue that we're on the money as well there. Right with Magnussen and uh, Daniel Ricciardo then. So as we get ready for qualifying, uh, both driver setups they're pretty happy with. We've just got to obviously make sure uh, that we try and tweak everything so it's absolutely perfect. If we go one more click of front wing... I take off a little bit of tyre. No, for some reason that does the opposite effect of what I wanted. Uh, I don't really want to change too much again, but I guess we'll go like that. And maybe Yuki's going to be absolutely perfect there. Liam Lawson. Oh, he's oversteer his way out, so no idea what we've done there. Traction figure's looking pretty good, though, so... Yeah, really not too sure what to try uh, with him there to try and obviously get him in the right line. I guess we need a bit less wing. I guess. I don't really know. We'll, we'll try and tweak a few bits and I'll see you on the circuit. I've barely gone out into free practice, into qualifying, and Lawson's already spun. Eh? What, what has he done? He's got damage somewhere on the car. I mean, he's literally on his outlap. Literally on his outlap, and he drops it over the curbs. My bad, guys. And look, uh, he didn't hit anything, which I guess is good. Um, but yeah, Liam Lawson there immediately putting a load of wear through his tyres. His gearbox is down at 23%. So he might have to take another one of those this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get any kind of metric at tyre life, do we, when they're out uh, in qualifying. But what I'm going to do with... Uh, obviously, we're going to send Yuki out for a normal lap. What I'm going to do with Liam behind is first lap I'm going to abandon at the end of it. And see whether that means he's going to be able to go quicker here. As they're going to start their first runs... Here in Q1. Luckily, I think Sonoda, yeah, will just about get ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, so, yeah, Lawson then just a little bit further behind. Let's make sure he doesn't spin on his flyer then. So, we need to compare, obviously, the split times. 25-9 from Yuki in Sector 1. Liam Lawson, as he makes his way out to the back straight there. Luckily, less dramatic that time round as he heads under the bridge. 26-0. So, again, only about a tenth away. And, yeah, getting stuck under a little bit of traffic as well. So I think that is the perfect opportunity for us uh, to obviously abandon this lap right at the end of it. Ricardo does get out of the way, which I guess is good. But, yeah, Yuki uh, is having a pretty good lap so far. Even if, yeah, Liam is just a few tenths away, of course. You know, it, it's cheesy. It's hilarious. But I'm just genuinely curiosity has got the better of me here. It might well be that the lap just gets invalidated at the end of it. Or it just doesn't count to anything there. It's a 38-2 middle sector. Lawson is going to be on a 38-7. So he's going to be a little bit further behind. But as we make our way then down in towards the final couple of corners. Yuki Sonoda I think is going to hopefully go into P2. Hopefully within a few tenths of Lance Stroll. He goes seven tenths away then. So Liam was a few tenths behind the pair of them. And as he makes his way into the pit lane then, are we going to see him get any closer uh, to Sonoda? If he's within about three tenths, I think we've got a shot. He does! That actually works. So if you're right on the cusp in qualifying inside F1 Manager here at Silverstone, yes, it's a bit of a nuanced one, but you can dive into the pit lane and make up time. That is both hilarious 
and probably needs fixing. Well, I genuinely have no idea what's going on with the times at the moment, because both of our cars are pretty high up the order, but Lando Norris, George Russell, quite a few others all really struggling, and the gaps for some reason are really strung out so far here in qualifying, so really not too sure what to make of this. I've got Yuki ready to go right at the end of the session if I feel he's a bit too close to the drop zone, but yeah, with lap times like that, I think we'd look pretty good here to make it straight into Q2. As Lawson then, yeah, making his way through the first couple of corners. Of course, we know roughly now uh, what split times we need to see from him. Uh, but yeah, if he could go quicker than Yuki in Q1, that would be a rather good achievement there. 26-1, he's slightly down uh, in that first sector. But hopefully he's not going to get held up through sector 2 this time. We're looking for, what, I think it was a 0.7? Like a 38-7, I want to say, for Liam Lawson through sector 2 was his last one. Uh, but like we said, yeah, he did get held up here, and at the moment... He has got completely free track space in front of him, so nice open road at the moment as he makes his way through Cop's corner there, completely pinned in seventh gear. We're still struggling a little bit uh, with top speed inside this game. Now, some of you have been giving me some tips. Apparently, I need to put this car with less fuel at the start of a race because the Renault power unit uh, is by far and away the best one for fuel saving. As there we go, 38.5 middle sector. So Lawson, yeah, is looking a bit closer this time round to his teammate. As why not has he abandoned the lap before it's over? Oh, damn it. I told him to box without taking manual control, didn't I? I'm so stupid. I might have just sacrificed his second run. Does I mean he's going to go right into the back of the Haskar there into the pit lane? Surely, yeah, we don't improve on that. No, no chance at all. So we've got one run, uh, but both drivers still looking oddly safe. Still very worried then that everybody else is going to improve right at the end of this session. So yeah, we are going to head back out for one last ditch run with both cars. It's going to leave Lawson with not many spare sets of tyres if we do see Q2. Yeah, I'm not really sure why the gaps are so spaced out here. As Yuki finding another tenth or so in that first sector. Hopefully Lawson's going to be able to do the same uh, as Grip continues to ramp up. I really don't know whether it's worth trying to just dive Yuki into the pit lane as well here. Although there does seem to be a little bit of RNG in it. Um, with the way kind of the AI slowed down. 26-6 by Liam, so yeah, his lap is basically over. So you may as well try it with him right towards the end of the session. But yeah, if Yuki is up in Sector 2, I think we've got the pace here. Looks like other cars are improving, but nowhere near enough. And I think, yeah, we're, ma we're pretty much guaranteed to at least get one of the cars into Q2. As Yuki Sonoda there, 38-2. Not an improvement through that second split. Maybe Liam Lawson... Can do something a little bit special as well, a bit further behind. But, yeah, Yuki Tsunoda hopefully is going to be able to, you know, just build himself up a little bit more safety there. The likes of Ricardo and Alonso do seem to have upped their pace right towards the end of the session. And say Logan Sargent there, I believe, is still out on a run out of, through the final corner. It is going to be another improvement then by uh, Yuki to go on to a twin uh, 2.4 seconds off the pace. But we are going to get Liam to dive into the pit lane then. Is it too late? Yes, it is. So I guess we've just got to try and go for it through the final couple of corners. But could we get both cars into Q2 in quite possibly the weirdest way ever inside F1 manager Lawson across the line? That was a complete write-off. He ends up P10, however. Like I said, I really have no idea why we ended up being so quick, but honestly, looking through the times, it was more that a lot of other drivers were very slow there. Fernando Alonso down in P12, George Russell down in P20. So yeah, big shocker out in Q1, of course, took pole here in the real life Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I guess for us 9th and 10th, if we can make Q3, I'd be very happy. Well, Sonoda has obviously carried an extra set of the soft compound tyres here into Q2. I was actually trying one of the challenges a few days ago uh, inside this game as well, here at Silverstone on stream. So luckily, I've got a fair bit of information about what works around this circuit and what really doesn't. Uh, so that will hopefully give us a little bit of extra information as we head into the Grand Prix, of course, and obviously in future seasons as well. Hopefully we'll be able to carry through some extra knowledge as well inside this game. But yeah, Yuki on his first flyer then. 25-8-2-5 is again a pretty good Sector 1 split. But we're going to try and stick with him then on this lap. Maybe we could try and get him into Q3. Uh, of course, yeah, there should be one driver that will make Q3 that normally wouldn't with George Russell out. But yeah, Alonso really did lack pace in Q2 as well. So we could see both ourselves, you know, whether that could be both of our cars, whether that could be, you know, uh, Sonoda and Ricardo. Whatever happens, I think there might be a good chance for points today 
with Russell way down the order. And, of course, Mercedes still really struggling uh, inside this series there. But, of course, yeah, we've got a long race ahead of us still. Only time will tell. Oh, Ayuki hanging it right out towards the limit there. Out onto the back straight. 38-3, though. It's not about second split time here. As he makes his way down in towards the final couple of corners then. Hopefully, we're going to be able to go around the pace. Actually, I reckon we should be able to go quicker than Lando Norris based on what I'm seeing so far here. So the AI, yeah, really, really struggling to set consistent lap times around this venue as through the final couple of corners we go. We're going to do a 28.5, I believe. And we do go quicker than Lando Norris. Well, we're going to try and get both drivers out a little bit early then, ready for their final run. Just see if we can try to avoid a little bit of traffic here right towards the end of the session. We know Lawson, annoyingly, is probably going to have to take a gearbox penalty. Honestly, I'm tempted to risk it with him this weekend if he does qualify quite well, because I would love to see the Kiwi get some points on the board as Yuki's lap's ruined. Instantly ruined. So we'll tone him back down if we somehow make Q3. I may as well try and carry the extra set of tyres as well there. But yeah, Yuki Tsunoda is going to peel back into the pit lane then at the end of this lap. How is Liam Lawson going to fare in the other car? Hopefully we can try and see some good sector times coming in by him there. Currently, yeah, no time on the board. Uh, but yeah, Yuki Tsunoda may be able to hold up some other cars as well. They like to do it to me. Why can't we return the favour there? As Albon as well has set a really, really competitive time so far in Q2. So... Maybe we'll be able to try and get close to him there. It's a 26-2 again. Liam is really, really struggling just to find that last bit of pace in the car there. And he's going to get held up by one of the Red Bulls. I guess we've just got to try and go for it with other cars struggling as well here. So we're going to set him to manual control. And just try and make sure that we manage those tyres and everything else around this circuit then. As I mean, yes, so much traffic on his final last ditch run there. As, yeah, it's, it's a complete write-off, isn't it, once again? Still, they need to fix blue flags inside these games. They are so annoying and so inconsistent. And, you know, yes, blue flag incidents do happen in real life Formula 1. But not this often there. So we're going to try and call it Liam into the pit lane at the end of this one. But I'm going to get him to keep pushing on right until the very end of the lap. Even if there's just a couple of extra tents that can be found here. As he's going to make his way back into the pit lane. Then we're going to be cheeky with the strat once more. Don't think we're going to be able to get up to Ricardo or anything like that. But we might be able to get ahead of Logan Sargent and Esteban Ocon here. As up over the line, we go P14. That's <laughs> so stupid. But you know what? We'll take it. Well, I think in the end, we'd all expected it to either be Yuki or Ricardo that made it into Q3. But it was Alex Albon that sprung the surprise there right in the end. And yeah, that very good lap time by him. 28 thousandths of a second clear of Sonoda was the difference come the end of qualifying. So Alex Albon will line up P10 ready for the Grand Prix, most likely. Uh, I'm going to put a fresh gearbox in the back of Lawson's car. So let's see how we fare. 52 laps around Silverstone await our drivers as the anticipation continues to build. Silverstone is certainly a circuit rich in Formula One history. From Giuseppe Farina winning the first championship race held here in 1950, right through to Lewis Hamilton's 2008 masterclass on racing in the rain. Silverstone is a power circuit. It demands downforce and total confidence in the car for a driver to keep their foot planted through sector two, through the high-speed corners at Woodcut and at Copps, and carrying on through Maggots and Beckett's. It's race day and final preparations are underway. Well, here we are then, getting ready for the British Grand Prix. Then looking forward to this one, I'm hoping we can have a pretty good day out there. The tyre wear is not too bad, but I do know, yeah, you probably want to avoid the soft compound because they're no better uh, than the mediums around this circuit. And obviously, they don't last anywhere near as long. With Lawson, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start him on the hards uh, and basically just try and see as to how far we can go uh, in this race before we bolt on a set of the mediums towards the checkered flag there but like i said we're gonna have to try uh and put a new gearbox in the back of that car as well uh because yeah otherwise i don't think he's gonna see the checkered flag here new gearbox is gonna go in he's already gone through two of them so far this season which is a little bit of a shame uh but yeah i think we're ready then for the grand prix i think what we're actually gonna do is try and take a little bit of fuel out of the car as well uh, ready for the start of this one we'll try and go with 50 laps and see if we can make up a little bit. We'll go 51 with Yuki there so we can push on a little bit more. But yeah, let's do this thing though. It's time for the British Grand Prix.
Final checks are being carried out by the teams and it won't be long until we get this race underway. If Pierre Gasly's feeling the pressure, he's certainly not showing it. While I imagine many are looking at the other end of the grid, I'm keen to see what they can achieve from P19. This should certainly be a good one, folks. Hold on tight. It's the British Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we go. Well, I thought Lawson then was going to be starting from the back of the field, but apparently, yeah, hasn't broke Park Ferme there uh, with that uh, gearbox change. So I guess we'll be pretty happy with that one then. Immediately, we're going to try and go on the offensive, or defensive even, I should say, against Daniel Ricciardo here. And I think the other big one is try and see if we can get ahead of Alex Albon early on as well. They're down the inside of the V-Carb. We'll go through the first corner. And we just got to try and make sure, yeah, that we get ahead and that we make some places up early on there. We don't want to let Albon get away, especially when, you know, we might be able to keep up with those Mercs early on as well here in the race. Lawson, the idea with him, yeah, is just going to be about trying to hang on a little bit further behind. Obviously, we'll use Yuki's ability on the soft compound tyres early on. Just work out how far the car is going to be... Sorry, the medium compound early on. Work out how far we're able to go and then kind of work our way from there. Then there's Alonso already reporting issues on the Aston Martin. Not too sure what's happened to him. Mechanical fault lap one is not ideal. So he's got no battery, apparently, which will be quite a major issue early on in this race, then. He's riding on board with Yuki Tsunoda up in towards Magata Beckett's for the first time. You can see nose to tail with the Williams and the V-Carb in front and behind. But surely we can try and use the deploy here and go for the move on lap one. Lawson's lost a couple of spots, but I believe he might be one of the only cars on the hards, which he is. Only he and Sergio Perez there, so already... Stroll losing a bit of ground to Hamilton in front. We've obviously got George Russell uh, down at the rear of the field as well as our Yuki. I think thought about looking for a move down at that final corner. Not quite able to make it happen that time round there as DRS now enabled. But for Stappen, he will not care at the front of the field because he's already built up a little bit of a lead there. But you just got to be careful. You've got to manage the tight temperatures here early on in this race. We'll see if Yuki can make the move. No, not happening yet. So we'll just tell him... To calm it back down. I don't want him losing too much confidence too early uh, in this race as well. But yeah, uh, Lawson, obviously, we're just going to try and save the fuel as the afternoon goes on. Yuki, if there is a chance of points, we've got to try and claim it nice and early here. As down the back straight will go once again. Oh, he thinks about it once more there on Alex Albon. But again, not quite able to have the confidence to get the car down the inside. He might be able to get a good run, though, off of Luffield. This is where the AI's battery... Uh, he's most effectively deployed there. And you can see immediately Sonoda is going to showcase to us why. Around the outside of Albon, he'll go. And you can immediately see then. Can we get the long way around? We do give Albon the room. And he'll try and come back at us on the exit of the corner there. This is brilliant racing early on here at Silverstone. But surely we're going to move up into the points. No, Albon again. Not wanting to back out of it there. He's going to have the inside through Maggots and Beckett's on the exit. And Yuki again is just going to have to back out there. Who's got the DRS? I think... Alex might have done. Try and have a look on the rear wing there. And yep, you can see Alex Alwyn using that DRS to the best of his ability as well there. So not able to make that move. But maybe more importantly for us, we've got yellow flags out. Sainz, I think, has had an incident. What on earth has happened to Carlos Sainz then early on? As he's going to try and get back on the road. And he's parked on the inside of that final corner. So just a look at by himself. Now here's our drivers all trying to take turn 16. There's the lockup, and they'll need to be mindful of the effect that that had on the tyres. Yeah, big, big mistake for Carlos Sainz early on, and that's going to mean he's going to drop right to the rear of the field then, as he's got to wait for every single car to go by. Good for us. It means we get to jump up into P10 then without having to get the move done on Alex Albon. But I think, honestly, early on here, it's just about going to be sticking with the Williams driver and trying to open up the strategy later on in the day for ourselves. How is Lawson getting on a little bit further behind? We've got to make sure uh, that I don't let him drop too far behind those cars in front early. Because he's under a bit of pressure from Pierre Gasly as well then. But yeah, this needs to be a good weekend for Liam Lawson. I'd love for him to try and get like a top 15 result or something like that. As again, yeah, we've just got to be careful with Yuki. 
want to make sure he's staying with Alvin. But ultimately, I'm not sure I actually want to see him make too many moves early on in this race. I mean, Verstappen already has built up such a lead early on in this race. we just got to try and make sure that we're doing well uh, with the battery management there on the Kiwis car. And we'll just start simulating forward just a little bit then to kind of see how things are shaping up here. Looks like he's lost the spot to Pierre Gasly. But again, you know, it is about playing the long game here. He's only about a second behind. Yeah, it's, it's really, yeah, there's got a big, big train of cars, actually. There's Sonoda trying to pull away with Ricardo. So I think Albon might have made a small error somewhere because that's allowed those two uh, to really just break away a little bit early. Uh, and that works out very, very nicely for us there as Ricardo now, I believe, just trying to build up a little bit of a gap over Yuki Sonoda. So we're going to just go aggressive on the tyres again. Um, said the pit stops, though, are so long here. So I really don't think a two-stop is going to be the way to go. Um, but, yeah, Ricardo, I think, is going to be aggressively pushing for it there as he's taken a bit more out of his tyres uh, early on in this race. So, again, I'll go back down to neutral uh, with Yuki here as more mechanical gremlins are being reported by other drivers. Yeah, Lawson, he's kind of our test guinea pig a little bit further back. And, I mean, looking at it, 3% wear a lap. He can go pretty deep uh, into this race on that set of the softs. I think we'll just go down onto the light mode as well. Just to see if we can take, you know, get him a little bit further. Yuki, though, to be fair to him, I mean, he's doing pretty well on this medium set. They're not actually any worse worn uh, than Liam's hard. So I think he's going to comfortably be able to get to the end. And that kind of battling is exactly what we want to see just in front there. Atoma Miata getting the elbows out. Albon already dropping quite away uh, behind Sonoda uh, and Ricardo. But I think, yeah, for us today, with Sonoda especially, it's going to be really, really important that we just try and stay close to Danny Rick. There's yeah, okay. Lawson, yeah, still just waiting around there. He's got Carlos Sainz now actually having a look down the inside in that Ferrari. So a little bit of an aggressive maneuver there coming out by the Spaniard. But previous Grand Prix winner here, uh, Carlos Sainz knows what he's doing around this venue as well. There is Bottas now up into P11. Could we potentially see Sauber uh, in a shot for points this afternoon? That would be quite a turnout for the books early on, as Perez is now reporting mechanical faults as well. Uh, Ricardo, I think, is trying to keep up with Sir Lance, but it's not really working for him too well early on. Uh, but yeah, Yuki, I think if we can get him to about lap 22, lap 23, uh, then he's going to be pretty comfortable to take a set of hard tyres to the end of the afternoon. He's working the car quite nicely at the moment. Both drivers just struggling a little bit with engine overheating as well here, but for us... I think it's going to be a real indicator of what's going on based on when Ricardo pits because he's looking after the set of tyres in front again now. So, of course, obviously, we've got to see if he's one or two stopping this GP. You know, like I said, we are going to go aggressive there as Russell has already worked his way up then to P11 here. So that's not looking too good for us. He is on the softs, though, as well. So he might be struggling just a little bit more. And yeah, Lawson, I think things are just going back in the favour of, of his teammate there. So yeah, we're going to lose the place. Um, no, not quite just yet to George Russell. Actually, those those soft compound tyres are able to go pretty lengthy into this race. I think, though, for Yuki at the moment, it's just going to be about let Russell by and don't really worry about it. Try and stay in his slipstream as best as we can. But, yeah, other drivers now into the pit lane. Rotomo Miata coming in. Hamilton as well just coming back out of the pit lane there. So we're going to be ahead of him. But, yeah, really, actually, these, these medium tyres aren't hanging on better than anybody else's like I would hope they would, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, as Lawson makes a bit of a mistake there as well. How on earth has he locked up a turn two? That's a bit of an odd one. Very heavy on the brakes. By that point, it was just too late. That seems like a very, very odd error there, but luckily it hasn't cost him too much time. Uh, but yeah, Sonoda now just behind George Russell. And yeah, Lawson oh, has picked up floor damage as well. So it just goes from bad to worse uh, with him at the moment. Obviously, we can't change that in the Grand Prix or anything like that. So Lawson has just got to try and hang on to that as best as possible here. As Yuki then, just starting to get a little bit worried about those tyres. So I think we're just going to sit him back. And obviously, just make sure that we stay in the range of Russell as best as we can. But I would have thought we'll see Russell dive into the pit lane pretty soon here. Because, yeah, I mean, look at that. We're in a Mercedes sandwich, and it's dragging us a little bit closer to Ricardo then. 
Like I said, I want to try and get these to about lap 23, lap 24. And if no one else can really go further than lap 20, like Daniel Ricciardo, he is going hard to the end. But 34 laps on that set, I think is going to be a very, very tall order to get him through to the checkered flag. Annoyingly, he's come out in quite a lot of clear air, though, as most other cars behind have opted to pit as well. So, Yuki, this race is going to be all about later on. In the GP there, you can already see, yeah, Russell and Ricardo taking a bit more time out of him. But if we can avoid making that second pit stop, that is going to carry us deep into the afternoon and really work out quite beneficial for us. Lawson as well, his tyres aren't looking great. Uh, so I think he'll be, he's going to have to dive into the pit lane pretty soon. Yuki, we're going to do lap 23. I think now is going to be the time to pit in this Grand Prix there. And yeah, onto that first set of the hard compounded tyres as Lawson... I think we're going to have to try and box him. And I think he's going to have to two-stop this one. We'll put him on the mediums. Oh, he's got yellows out temporarily. Oh, for now, God's sake. To take a look here. Let's have a look at the action. It's all at the final corner. Around they spin. <sighs> that certainly wouldn't have been in their plans today. Oh, Lawson, man. I so want to like you in this game. I so want to rate you. But so many mistakes coming in still. For our second driver. And it is getting increasingly difficult. To back him inside this game there. Like I said. We'll box mediums the end of next lap. Because obviously Yuki is diving into the pit lane pretty soon. Uh, but yeah. It is so so frustrating as well. There is Sainz now. Back up into P11 of this race. So he's on a set of hards. But again. He's going to have to box before the end. So we might not be as well in the shot for points. As I was hoping we would be here. As you can see. Russell now. Gets the move on Sonoda, despite the fact they've each got one more pit stop to make in this race. As we need to try and make sure that Yuki has a clean, tidy stop. Let's just wait and see. Come on, tyres going on. 2.7, not bad going in the end there. And yeah, he's going to try and take those uh, to the end of the GP. So back out in P12. Like I said, I guess we're kind of just hoping still that other drivers maybe have some reliability gremlins. But hopefully, we're just going to be a little bit quicker than Ricardo then. Uh, throughout most of the second stint in this GP. We're going to try and go aggressive. Obviously, just get those tyres up to temperature. We've got more yellow flags out. Piastri with a bit of lock-up as well. Uh, but yeah, get those tyres back up to scrub them. And we will bring him back down into neutral there. As yeah, Lawson into the pit lane. So yeah, we've got to try and make sure he has a nice, clean, tidy stop as well. But he's likely going to have to go to a set of softs towards the end. When it rains, it pours. I tell you what, man. It is so frustrating. Five seconds stop. Lawson's day. It's just going from bad to worse. Who's out? Hulkenberg's out of the Grand Prix, so I must have completely missed that one as well. Um, but yeah, I do not want to watch that pit stop issue again. And yeah, I think, to be honest, for, for Liam at this stage of the day, it is just going to be about trying to make sure that we see the checkered flag and maybe beat out a couple of other drivers as well. There is Alonso's boxed. Uh, Yuki isn't really taking time out of Ricardo though, which is a little bit worrying. In fact, that gap's floating around 16 seconds. It's actually going up slightly now, so I think Ricardo is trying to push on on that second set of the tyres here. So, yeah, it's really not looking great for either car right now. Uh, we're trying to obviously just save a little bit more fuel uh, with Liam there, bring him a bit closer in line with what Yuki's able to do. I mean, that gap now is up to 20 seconds to Danny Rick. So I've really got no idea what we're kind of doing at the moment that isn't working for us. He's got 20% worse tyres, but he's surely going to have to box again as well by the end of the day. I think we've just been lapped, though, which might explain why we lost a little bit more. So we've got yellow flags. Hamilton's ran wide. And I think Lawson's made another mistake. Now here we are at the final corner. And the How many mistakes can we watch Liam Lawson make in this race? I think part of it might be down to the floor damage. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say the floor damage might be costing him. But the thing that worries me more is that he's going to stack it and actually do some damage to the car. And that's really not what we need at this stage of the afternoon. We only need to get one more spot though and he'll get his objective uh, for the race weekend as well. So I want to try and just keep at it uh, towards the end of the GP as well there. But yeah, Ricardo now having to let a few cars lap him as well. So he's losing a bit of time. Zhou there has a pit stop issue as well. Um, but yeah, we're starting just to take time out of Ricardo again, which is really, really good at this stage of the day. The annoying bit is Alex Albon's doing the same thing to us. So yeah, we have still got to monitor that gap there. But yeah, obviously Yuki trying to see his way to the checkered flag. 
Uh, Lawson, we've cooked through that set of tyres way, way quicker than I was expecting to. So I think we're going to box him here. He's got one fresh set of softs to see him through to the chequered flag as well there. So when is Ricardo going to pit in this GP? Though I'll be honest, yeah, with Russell uh, and Sainz's pace at the moment, it's going to be difficult. As there we go. Ricardo's boxed and immediately has come out about a second behind us. So that's really not worked out so far this race. And I guess we're kind of hoping that neither Perez or Alonso... Their mechanical issues really cost him too much towards the end. As here goes Ricardo, trying to look around the outside. He's on soft compound tyres as well, man. This is so impossible. We just can't do anything against the Australian. I think, yeah, the one-stop strategy today has really not what we wanted it to be. Can we try and keep up with him? I mean, will those tyres fall off towards the end? I don't know, but I guess we've got to try and hang with him here. As What's the gap to Miata further back? 26 seconds. You know what? We can afford to box, couldn't we? We can afford to box, put him on softs. And just see if anything crazy happens right towards the end of the race there. As Lawson, he's just trying to go to the end. We'll put him on lean mix one. He's 23 seconds behind Ocon, who has admittedly got his own mechanical issues. So he might still achieve his race objective of P19 here. But yeah, we shouldn't have to save all the fuel though. Because uh, of course, obviously, we, we are lapsed down by the end of this one. So that might not be the end of the world for us. I guess now it's just see if we're any quicker than Ricardo, But... I don't see a way in which we take 20 seconds out of the Australian uh, before the end of the afternoon. I guess we'll try and push on a little bit on these tyres. Uh, yeah, we're just over 10 laps to go. Once again, it looks like things just aren't quite going our way inside this series. And yeah, for, unless we get mechanical gremlins for others, I don't think that's going to change before the end of the afternoon here. Just cooking those tyres a bit too much uh, on Yuki's car as Albon... Reporting some issues as well. Unless we get like a late race safety car or something like that. Yeah, I don't think we're able to really do much else here at this stage of the day. As Alonso is still really struggling uh, with his car there. That gap to Ricardo is not really going down. But how many times this season have we seen races where both drivers just are struggling? You know, we're just waiting for those last couple of big upgrades. And hopefully, you know, that new uh, rear wing is going to make a difference heading into the second half of the year. But ultimately, yeah, this stage of the game, it is just all about trying to get to the end. Uh, Lawson is still in P20 as Ocon reporting big mechanical issues. That's it. Is that him out? Is that going to be Esteban Ocon out? Are we potentially going to gain a spot here? As Ocon into the pit lane. Then I think he might be retiring that car. So we might get Liam into the position we still need him in by the end of this race there. So that would be rather nice. As a little bit of a consolation prize as well there. As I think, yeah, are Alpine retiring that car with just three laps to go with the race? Yes, they are. And Esteban Ocon out of the British Grand Prix then. So disappointing for him late on in the day. I mean, oh, I'm getting a little bit nervous as well. Ricardo taking time out of Fernando Alonso here. I'm really hoping he doesn't quite get to the Spaniard before this race is down and out. We've got two laps left. I tell you what, yeah, he's getting very, very close there. To Alonso, but luckily, I don't think he's quite gonna have enough by the end of this race. Max Verstappen, though, yet again, is gonna dominate. I mean, that's the last two Grand Prix now. He's won by clear of 30 seconds over any other car. It has been a ridiculous run of form. Yeah, Max Verstappen there, absolutely rapid this weekend again, as we're still watching Danny Rick, who luckily I don't think is quite going to get close enough to Alonso by the end of this race there. Alonso struggling with mechanical issues again, but once more, it is going to be your big five teams that pick up all of the points this weekend. Lawson, I mean, he's going to claim that P19, gets a little bit of extra cash in the pocket, which I guess is nice as well there. But ultimately, yeah, we took the strategy the wrong way this weekend. It hasn't quite worked. We're going to end up one lap down, to be fair, with the Yuki. So we didn't quite get lap twice in the end, which I guess is nice. And Lawson, yeah, finishing up another lap further behind there as he's almost had a puncture right towards the end of this one. But through the final couple of corners, we've survived another race. There's still a lot of work to do. We know we're starting to bring upgrades that are hopefully pushing the team in the right direction. But boy, oh boy, it's still tough when it feels like nothing goes our way. Yuki Sonoda makes his way back after the events of that race. Just out of the points today with a P12 finish in the end.
and no doubt the Stappen fans will be celebrating the Dutchman's achievement. Taking their eighth win of the season, there's just no stopping them. Well, we might be in Britain, but our podium finishers won't be celebrating with a cup of tea tonight. They'll be staying true to Formula One tradition. Well, Karun, how do you think they'll be feeling in the team garage at the end of that? Well, it was a bit of a mixed bag here. Some things went their way, but others didn't. I think their main target now will be finding some consistency for sure. And here in Silverstone, the weekend now draws to a close. Next round, we're moving on to an exhilarating circuit. Formula One will be taking to the Hungaro Ring for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Well, there we go then. Max Verstappen takes the win here at Silverstone. And like we said, a second race in a row where he's won by over half a minute. It really does seem that nobody has got an answer for the Dutchman at the moment. Charles Leclerc P2 ahead of Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri there. Sergio Perez, the last con not to be a lap down in the end. And it was only just looking at those gaps at the end of the day there. Even Sainz got lapped, although admittedly he did end up at the rear of the field early on. Uh, and yeah, for us then, Mercedes, weirdly this weekend, it's one of the strongest races they've had in terms of pace because Russell, yeah, was able to get back to the front of, you know, kind of the back marker group pretty early. And yeah, we never really stood a chance in trying to keep up with him there. P12 for Yuki in the end, P19 for Liam. We do achieve the objectives we wanted uh, in terms of the cash bonuses, though. So I guess that's a good thing there as, yeah, Verstappen now opens up a 48-point lead over Lando Norris in the world title. I just can't help but feel, yeah, things are starting to look pretty comfortable for the Dutchman there. Norris in P2 ahead of Leclerc still, uh, as Ferrari's consistency is still carrying them. Uh, and that means constructors-wise, you can see there's still less than 100 points covering your top three teams in the constructors there. So if McLaren and Ferrari can bring some big upgrades, then maybe, just maybe, they can keep up there. Still that 10-point gap to V-Carb haunts us at this stage of the campaign. And fastest pit stop-wise, we didn't get anything again, which is not really surprising at this stage of the year. We're down to, well, we're still in P8 at the moment, uh, but we are losing points rather rapidly to Haas. And we could very easily end up finishing last in that championship this year. A 2.63 uh, 2 second stop is hardly one to write home about. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we'll be back very soon when Formula 1 returns ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix.